Hi everybody, I'm Martin and this is Getting Started with Mindforger video. Today I would like to introduce Mindforger, which is Thinking Notebook and Markdown IDE. I will start with the real basics, with the single file, Markdown file editation. Then I will move to IDE features and finally I would like to show you Mindforger as a Thinking Notebook, in other words, with its most interesting features. So let me start with a single markdown file editation. I prepared really simple uh, example markdown file. It's formed by the five sections. So let me show it side by side with that file listing. So on the left you can see that markdown document there is some title section and then there are sections containing uh, just a small amount of text. On the right you can see how is such a document represented in, in Mindforger. So you can see a Mindforger splits the documents by sections and shows them as an outline on the left in that tree. Above that outline is a document title with its text. So I can choose individual sections like this. And on the right, um, it shows me the text. And that if I want to see document title with its text, you can just click that label above that outline tree. Editation is done either from menu, so that section is called note, so I can choose edit in here, or which is more, which is easier, I can double click that text and add a text in there. Mindforger wants to help you in formatting. So if you don't to write the formatting, you can choose it from uh, format menu. There are, you know, things that Markdown specification uh, provides. So bold italics formatting, there are bullet, bulleted lists, numbered list, for instance. So to me, for instance, create that numbered list. I can want I want to create three rows with some depth and Mindforger will generate that list for me. And um, I can put there also a link or image for instance. So I like and I can choose, I want to insert link to another node like node 5. And you can see I like section 5. Now I can save it with remember or I can use alt left to save it. So you can see that list. You can see on the left the document has been updated. I can click section 5 and now I'm in section 5. Let me just clear the text now. Also in this case. And uh, now you can see on the left uh, so in that first section there is some extra text. You can see that that plain document, bare document, and I would like to uh, explain why Mindforg uses that outline tree. It's inspired by outliners and it's very practical when you want to refactor sections. When you have huge documents, like I have documents that has they downloaded from the internet that have hundreds of sections. So I can move these sections up or down. So you can see on the left how it changes. I can move them down or up in the hierarchy, which is called promote or demo. So I can promote them like this and demo them like this. And the document is modified for me. So on the left, you can see how Mindforger modifies that. You can do these modifications, obviously, from the menu, uh, like here is promote and uh, you can move the node to the first or the last position uh, in uh, on that level and so this can be done from the menu or it can be done using the keyboard and as i said you 
can be very very productive with this so I can just change it like that and put it to the original structure so there are just few things you need to remember when you're opening the document you can do it from the command line you can do it from here just by len bar down file if you want to see a document title and its text you need to click this label if you want to edit at the text you can double click that or you can use it from the menu so that would be very quickly what can be done for the single file editation so you have the HTML preview or other features there is much more now let me move to the IDE features again I will just choose just a few uh, interesting features and uh, let me start with one use case where Mindfunger maybe can be especially useful so I have a list of a few interesting contents or git repositories with markdown documents on the Mindforger site so one of them is JavaScript algorithms on GitHub. It is trending these days and it's very nice. So if you find such a repository with the number of Markdown documents, you can just clone it to localhost, like in my case. And then open it in Mindforger. So let me just close Mindforger for now. And that uh, repository may contain a lot of directories that have some depth and there are some files and you don't want to navigate through them to find out what's there and and, and that, that might be complicated so instead I will just open mineforger with dots so I will open it in this current directory and mineforger walks through the directory structure finds all the markdown documents and opens if there is a readme the dot md in the root it opens it so you can see this is that root document and there are some sections I can navigate through that obviously as I was showing that and I can also see all the documents so let me just choose view notebooks uh, you can easily use shortcuts and here are all the documents that are in there and now I can navigate through them so for instance I can uh, do full text search like uh, looking for path for instance and it files for me all the documents there is something about path or I can find the document by name the documents are called notebooks in my project terminal so AVL3 is a nice example and now it shows how to insert notes uh, into that AVL3 let me switch on the associations the thinking capability so Again, I can choose that AVL3, and in the associations uh, here and here in the table, you can see what's associated to the node or section I am looking at. Right now, I'm looking at that notebook, at that document AVL3, so it offers me other trees like the normal tree, and uh, also I can navigate to the red black tree in like in this case so as you can see you don't have to s like go through the directory structure I just opened that and now I'm navigating to the documents and that gives me associations what I have in that in that repository uh, that associations works also if uh, I'm writing so when I'm on the word note for instance it finds me what's related to that note you can see there in here for instance I can save it or modify it okay so there's a prayer or I can write something so I'm looking for a problem to solve for instance and when I'm you know, moving around the text it looks for the word problem and find like knapsack problem or and queen's problem etc i can i will save it so this is you know how, how you can navigate around as i said you can find all the sections or sections within the scope of that particular document etc 
Now just a few interesting features for the editation. Let pres me presume that you want to, you know, for instance, create a new section from the text. So I can extract new note and say, well, perhaps it will be introduction. So I will change it to introduction. And as I was demonstrating, I will just somehow refactor that. And uh, maybe that I want to put um, that knapsack into that introduction. I can also do refactoring. So uh, maybe the definition, uh, I want to move it elsewhere. So I will just choose node refactor and I can move it to the different um, no, um, different document like Euclidean algorithm. So I will move the definition section with all these children. So right now I am in that Euclidean algorithm and you can see that there is knapsack problem and bounded knapsack problem in that Euclidean algorithm uh, document. I can obviously clone the node. So let me clone it like this. So now it's there multiple times. And uh, I can do much more things. I just wanted to show you real basics and highlights. So for the IDE, just remember that you can see all the documents. You can easily search them by full text, by name, within the scope of the document or globally. And MindForge is able to give you association what's in that repository of these documents. And with editation, you can refactor um, refactor uh, sections within the document. You can also refactor sections across all the documents, and there is much more, more, much more to be shown. Okay, so that would be for the for IDE. And finally, um, uh, let me um, let me. Uh, show you the, some thinking uh, notebook features really quickly. So when you download MindForger, you should download it. it, it the, the, the distribution usually always contains a documentation. The documentation is stored in the home directory. So and it's called MindForger repository. So I can remind that like this. So this is the documentation. You can also get this documentation from the GitHub, like from the MindForger repository. Uh, if it's not there, you can simply clone it and store it to the home. In this mind menu, you, you saw that there is something like new. This is how I can create new repository on Markdown offline, learn, which means loading. And it's not opening or loading. The learning does much more. I built knowledge graph behind the scene to do some associations, navigations, and help you in creation and, and understanding the documents. Reminding is about opening what you already saw. Scoping is actually very interesting. It's used to somehow scope the working set of what you do. This is a documentation and I was working on that in the recent days. So I may have a repository with thousands or hundreds of documents and I want to scope it to just the documents that I was working with recently. So for instance, when I have my personal repository and I'm going to work with the documents about MindForger from the recent month, I can scope it. And I will do something similar right now. So you can see there is a number of documents and in installation there is a number of distributions. So let me just uh, use that scope and I will just scope it uh, by one month right now and will not use text. So, or I can even do that better. I will just scope it by one day. It's much better. Okay, so these, the, uh, these notebooks were modified in recent day. And yesterday I was working on a Mac OS distribution. So even if you remember, there was a number of Linux distributions like Fedora, Ubuntu, etc. And 
now they are not visible. So this is how you can really restrict what you see on the level of documents and also what you see within these markdown documents. I, for instance, read uh, C++ guidelines, which is a markdown document with thousands of sections, and I can easily, you know, restrict it using this way. And uh, there is also another difference between the directory with some markdown documents and the MindForge repository. As you can see, I can use the tags, which can be used not just for scoping, but also I can use them for search, for instance. So I can do recall uh, notebooks by text and say I want to just uh, basics. And you can see that I have like basics, for instance. I can also look for the notes, I don't know, notes by text across all the, all the notebooks so this is probably something which is not finished like here the GUI is not in finished and also there is number of reads and writes urgency importance and other metadata and these are used to mark really more really more efficiently with the documents you have in your repository and MindForger can find out what you were working with what is very interesting you can see that I spent a lot of time on installation which is there is a lot of reads and also I spent a lot of time on, on uh, MindForge user documentation. So the, these are the functions that are interesting. You already saw uh, these associations that, that help you to find out what's there. So, and there is much more. So this would be just for the thinking notebook. So again, highlights, there is learning to the knowledge graph. There are scopes. There is much more like forgetting and other features. There are associations you saw for the directory of markdowns. So this should be just a few features that you may found find interesting. So I hope that you found this video educational and entertaining. I look forward going over more mindful features with you and let me uh, thank you for watching. Give MindForge a try. Thank you.